Hi folks, welcome back to the channel. Thank you very much for joining me once again. You are always most welcome. Well today, we need to talk about Eduard. <laughs> now then, I've had this series, I started with Airfix um, and uh, I think that's pretty positive about Airfix overall. Very, you know, fairly happy with the direction they're going in with some reservations. Um, then we talked about Reval, where I wasn't so happy at all. That turned into a monumental rant, really, in two parts. Um, but now we're moving on to one of the other manufacturers. Now, it's it's a little difficult for Ed, to, for me to talk about Edward because I have got I haven't done many of their kits. I've done two, I think, uh, and I've got two more here. I've got the Focke Wolf One Ninety A Four, and I've got the, the Pearl Harbor Tour Tour Tour, which we'll talk about in a minute. <clears throat> but I haven't had a great experience with them, and I, I, I always feel, um, historically, you know, they, they I, I kind of, uh, I get a bit frustrated with them, really. They always have the really fantastic looking plastic, plastic that cuts well and it glues together well, and, you know, everything should, on paper, everything should be absolutely brilliant with most of their products, but they seem to have an issue, two issues, and... The first one is, um, historically, uh, and again I say historically, I haven't got that long a history, so please bear with me, because I'm sure many of you, many of you watching this will be thinking, I've had great experiences with Edward, because I know people have. So I am going to only say what I've experienced, you know, I don't think my history with Edward is as deep as it is with all these other manufacturers like Tamiar and Airfix and Matchbox and Revell, etc. But... It hasn't been a great experience, and I, the one on the screen which I just had there, which is the, whoops, got low battery, <laughs> is the uh, the weekend edition of the Mirage 3C, which is in in my all time worst three build experiences. Not not the worst models, but the worst experience that I had. Uh, one of the worst, worst three in my the good, the bad, and the ugly series, and it was the ugly, the very ugly. And that was an absolutely tragic kit, and this is a kit I was really looking forward to building. It looked brilliant on the sprue, and this is where the problem comes in with Edward, I think. Most of their kits, when you have a look at them, you think, wow, they're so sharp, and there's great detail, the rivets are perfect, and the panel lines are perfect. Everything looks like it's been really thought through, until you get the glue out, and then you realise that it hasn't been thought through at all. And again, so I'm probably generalising a little bit here, but based on my experiences of this, what was the other one, the Tempest 5? Long story, I won't go into that, but um, a lot of issues with, again, that looked like an absolutely fantastic kit. And, and then they start building it and you find that the, the, you know, the attachment points, uh, the pins and the, the plug holes don't match. And they've got, um, and this is true of a few of them, they've got a lot of very, very badly positioned sprue gate attachment points and they have them sort of going around a corner and very very thick attachment points which go onto mate, mating surfaces and you've got to clean a lot off and cut a lot off and just not well thought through from a builder's point of view and I talked about this with uh, talking about um, with Airfix and saying that their best kits recently have been the ones where they've been designed by people who actually build models uh, which is not the case with all their designers but um, there we have it. Um, so I, I'm, I'm just relating there. I'm just going to show you the other one. That's the other one, the Tempest Mark V, uh, which I was, um, yeah, just berating there. A lot of strange decisions made in the way that they'd, um, especially on things like mold, uh, sprue gate attachment points, uh, the way they'd split the, the top and the bottom wing sort of halfway along the flaps, which looked really weird, um, sort of splitting it front to back, I mean. Very strange, very poor join of the fuselage and the wing. <laughs> Not designed by a modeler. No way. And this is my beef, really, with Edward. They seem to be brilliant at the CAD. And this is this is like one or two of the Chinese manufacturers. Like Kinetic, <laughs> another one. Um, absolutely fantastic on the CAD design um, and the surface detail. But not very good at thinking through how the model construction is going to be executed. Now, uh, I say they're not the only ones because I mentioned Kinetic and there are, there's lots of others where uh, you just think, well, you know, if you, if, you, if you were someone who was thinking about the ease of build, not, not easy, but, but relative achievable build without 
making a mess of it, you wouldn't design it the way that they've been designing them. And another thing that's very strange with Edouard recently as well, some of the surface quality on their kits has been very odd. Um, texture I'm talking about now. Where it's very grainy and granular and not smooth. And they've got all this fancy rivet detail which then gets lost amongst the granular grainy surface finish which is very odd. And it makes it not great then when you start applying primers and things because you end up having to probably put more down than you really want to and to get the nice smooth finish you end up losing some of the, the fine detail. So they're doing some strange things Edouard are and, and I said I don't want to be too critical because I've had bad experience. Just going back to the, um, the, the Mirage there, that was awful. I mean it was, I just couldn't believe it really because it looked so good on the sprue. It was, Classic case of, you know, I think it's another one where I said, oh, did I did a, do a review of that? I think I did. Inbox review. Oh, it was fantastic. Oh, no, it wasn't fantastic. It was like, oh, no. Really? <laughs> I mean, everything was wrong with it. It had horrible bowed parts. There was warping. Very, very, again, poor contact points where pins and the, and the lugs weren't matching up. You had to cut them off and... I mean, if you can't do it properly, just don't bother putting them on at all. I mean, it's it's better to have no lugs and pins to attach, say, the fuselage together um, and the nose and things like that. Don't have them at all if you can't do it properly. It's far better to let the modeler line everything up properly than have to start fighting against a badly conceived design. And on that, um, even to this day, I've finished that. Many of you have I've not got the kit out because I sort of couldn't be bothered, really. But it's still not right, it's still slightly warped, I can see it. Other people don't know how to see it, it's not that bad. Because I've, I've did a lot of remedial work. And it's probably not noticeable to the naked eye of anybody that doesn't know, but I know. And I can see it, and I can see the fuselage has got a banana bend in it. And it's just awful. And again, the underside and things like the uh, the way that the, the moulding of the, uh, the bay doors and... Uh, the bay uh, wheel well for the front wheel was bad and it was just a disaster. One of the worst kits I've ever built uh, and, and uh, people know from my <laughs> Kinetic Sea Harrier experience that I don't give up easily. Uh, I never said that kit was unbuildable by the way, somebody keeps insinuating I did, I didn't ever say that, I said it wasn't unbuildable, well I said it was a pain in the backside to build. And that was the same here. Buildable, yes. How many people are like me though? How many, I mean, there are people like me, quite a few of you watching this video. Perhaps, I don't know, 15% of the people, or 20% max that are watching this video might fight the way through to the bitter end with a kit that was as unpleasant as that. And that leaves about 80% of you that would quite understandably bin it. And I wouldn't blame any of you for doing that. And this is what annoys me. Um, Again, it's, this has turned into a rant. I'm going to talk about some nice things about Edward in a minute as well. So I'm not I'm not attacking Edward, but they are making one or two fundamental errors. A little bit like Airfix have been doing on one or two of their kits. A little bit too much focus on the CAD work and not enough on how the actual parts go together. And I just don't think there's enough uh, research and development in some of these companies now. It's all done. It's like look at this on my computer screen. Isn't it fantastic? job done I'm a genius no this is just the beginning of the process of creating a model kit that is going to be enjoyable and buildable for the customer for the for the model builder uh, and I don't think I think this is getting lost it's uh, everything's just done on the computer screen and they think that's it job done bit of scanning lidar scan uh, you know an aircraft or a tank or whatever it is put it on the computer screen yes we you know we've, it all looks beautiful blah 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 and then it's as though sometimes they don't bother to ever try to construct it. And I'm sure, you know, the Kinetic Sea Harrier and, you know, this uh, Mirage, classic examples of that, uh, the Edward Mirage. No, it wasn't well conceived. It didn't go together well. And I've seen other people say the same comments, not just me. Plenty of people have built that Mirage and said, you know, it was a bit of a horror, you know, didn't enjoy this. It was an uphill struggle for me, a real slog in the middle of winter when I wasn't not the best of moods at the best of times. Mis miserable weather made me miserable even more. Rat, 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 rat. <laughs> but you know, come on, come on. I just think that there's a there's a trend amongst designers in these companies that think that that's that's all there is to designing a kit is making it look good on a CAD screen, 
uh, and letting the computer uh, aided design system you know make decisions which don't actually work in favour of the thing actually being built. It might look great on the sprue but you've got to cut it off that sprue and you've got to have everything mating together. That Tempest for example a lot of its mating surfaces on things like the the top and bottom wing I mentioned even at the front they, they weren't they didn't mate up properly they were at odd angles it was just very odd. Not been designed by a model of that kit I don't believe it for a second because if it, it's either that or there's no QC or both. Um, and I just feel with Edward that they are a bit, and I've said this before, they're going to get shot now. I'll get flamed for saying this, but I think they're a bit overrated. You know, people say, oh, Tammy, you're overrated. No, Edward are better. They're not. <laughs> they're not better than Tammy are. They're not. Okay. <sighs> anyway, it's not all going to be bad news, but I'm going to get people, people that love Edward are going to be hating me now. I'm going to get hate letters. Death. <laughs> but let's talk about the other elephant in the room, the second thing they don't do well. And that, this is the, the most silly thing they've, they've probably any model, model manufacturer in recent years has done. And that's they've gone to these new decals. And I've got the decals here for the Rotora Tora Tora. I'm going to zoom you in. Now, many, many modellers, some of them even more experienced and greater models than I, agree that there's something very strange about their decision-making process. So here we've got the all the many, many options. I mean, this is one thing that... Um, one thing that Edouard are really good at is they... You know, to give some balance. They're very good at giving you a whole package in a box. So you get, you know, in, in some of the boxes, I know the, is it the Profi Pack ones where you get mask set. Sometimes you get the... Um, uh, the... Uh, photo etch instrumentation sets, you get your day count. everything is there that you need. That's one good thing about them, which makes them seem quite good value. Until 2021-22, when they changed to this new system of decals. Now, now Edouard did have some misfortune. They had a big fire in their warehouse, which wiped out a huge amount of their stock. <coughs> quite a financial blow, I'm sure. So that was very unfortunate. I think everybody felt very sorry for them. But they decided that they wanted to go in-house with their own decals, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that per se. But the, but the execution of this change in the decals has been a total disaster. Yeah. And again, before somebody starts screaming and shouting and saying, I can do them, I can... Yes. Jamie Hago did a, a couple of videos, didn't he, not long ago, where he showed it can be done. It can be done. If the wind is blowing in the right direction and the sun's out and, you know, you've, uh, you've got your four-leaf clover and everything else, you know, uh, you've got, it, it requires the look of the Irish to make this work, quite frankly, and there's two problems. One, and the main change is, they did a blind swap and they changed these um, decals to a new design, a new concept, without telling anybody, without any note in the instructions, nothing to tell the modeler that this was a different concept. And the, the point is here that the carrier film on them is on the top, not underneath. So what you do is you apply your decals and then you have to peel off this carrier film off the top of the decal. And this can lead to a lot of problems. A, you've got to know about it first of all, which is people, several people ruin models. I think even Phil Flory, was it Hellcat or something he was working on? I think even he had to re repaint a, ki a kit because... He had this problem with their decals. And he's, he's not alone. He's not alone. Many, many modellers suffered this. I didn't because I, at the time I wasn't building an Edouard. But it has frustrated me. The, the sheer stupidity of the decision to A, do it, to B, not tell anybody that they were doing it. What were they thinking of? What are they still thinking of in carrying on with it? So what you do is you have to peel off very carefully, peel away this, this top. And the argument that they've given is... It, it gives better conformability. The decal is much thinner and conforms over detail like panel lines and rivets and things and gives you a much more painted on look. But what they forget is they're just the aggravation and the time in trying to work these decals. It's not going to be, and this is the thing of course, at the end of a build, when most of us modellers want to get the thing finished and put the finishing touches on it and it turns into this huge 
uphill battle which can take days to sort out. Especially when you've got, I mean, this is not to have the zero, obviously, but you've got things like phantoms or whatever, or, or models that generally that have got a lot of stencils and things like that. I mean, on the stencil, really? And you've got to go in with tweezers onto your beautiful painted and, you know, top-coated model. And you've got to start digging in with tweezers trying to peel off this top carrier film. The whole concept is absurd. And, uh, it, you know, Edward would have been probably in this discussion. Edward, despite me having a couple of bad experiences, granted. But this is just put them sort of in the dock with Kinetic for me a little bit because it's so dumb. There's no need to do this. They could have just got their, you know, decals from Cartograph, which is what they were doing before, I think. Uh, and, and, and actually, the Focke Wolf 190 has got the old type decals, which I'll show you in a second. And they're great, there's nothing wrong with that. That's a good kit, actually, that's a really good one. <clears throat> but it's not just the, the concept and the, the difficulty of use either. Have a look at these decals, and this is very typical. Um, look at the actual print quality, I don't know if it's going to come out on the camera. But there's this very wishy-washy, poor quality printing. There's no real depth to the colour. Uh, this is showing so well. Um, those, you know, these red bars, for example. Oops, sorry. I've gone the wrong way. There we go. The red bars, for example, not very red. There's no depth to it. It's very grainy, the print. I don't know if you can really see that. I can't actually tell from here um, on the camera. But I can see with my human eye, naked eye here, that there's, you know, the, the meatballs there, the uh, rising suns. They're very wishy-washy and very grainy and very badly printed. And, and the blue is probably even worse. Now it's just astonishing. And I've, I've seen people who have got other kits uh, of the Edouard range and the printing is even worse than this. This is relatively good by comparison. So it's the worst of all scenarios, the worst of all worlds really. They've gone to a very strange concept which involves s additional skills <coughs> or certainly a high level of skill to, to actually make them work. They didn't tell anybody, which is stupid. They've even had to make videos now showing you how to do it, which is what you should have done at the beginning or include instructions in the, in the kit, you know. But the print quality is dire. So they just... I, they just got a go back to square one on this and start again because they've got made such a mess of it. Not telling the customer, thinking they can do it. You can't do a blind switch with a totally different concept of, you know, it's like, it's like someone who, um, say you had a disabled driver and, you, and then you suddenly give them a manual gearbox car and you don't tell them it's manual gearbox. Well, he's not going to be able to drive it, is he? You know what I mean? It's so, it's so alien to the, the way that the, uh, the user is used to operating the vehicle. Same with this, it's completely alien to us to be peeling this top film off and lots lots of people have complained that the, the tweezers and trying to get it off, they've scratched the paint finish it. Oh, it's just ridiculous. Here's my advice to you, Edward. I'm going to say some nice things as well, but I, I want to get this off my chest. Other mo I'm, I'm not the first model to bring this up, I'm probably the last one actually. But I think the time has come for you to just admit you've made a mistake. You don't have to make, make an apology or any climb down. Just let it be known that you're going to go back to a more conventional, quality, high quality printed decals. I mean, you compare those to Airfix, Tamiya, Zokimura, Great Wall Hobby, even Ravel. They'll be using Cartograph, won't they? So most of those companies will be using Cartograph, apart from the Japanese. It wipes the floor with that. That's just an abysmal quality. It's, it may be cheap and convenient for Edward. It's a disaster. And I can't, I was talking to somebody else about this about two weeks ago, and I said, I wish I could see the actual real-time current sales for the last two years of relative manufacturers. I am confident that Edward's sales have taken a bit of a nosedive about this. Because any modeler, I mean, before, you know, a younger modeler could pick up an Edward 172 kit and have great fun with it. You know, they'd be usually fairly easy to build and... Uh, very detailed and give a great result. Well, they wouldn't touch it now because as soon as you get to the day cars, they're going to have a complete train crash at the end. It's going to ruin the model. Why did they do this? Why did they not see that this was going to be a problem? 
I mean, it makes no odds. But I think that they're losing business over this. I'm not buying any. That's two years ago. And I'm not, I've not bought an Edward kit in two years at all, any description. Nor do I plan to buy any. Now, again, for balance, some, some of you will say, hang on a minute, it's a bit over the top, he's having a rat. And of course, you know, um, in this particular case, I could easily get some masks, like Montex paint masks. Um, because the rising sun on a Japanese aircraft and it's fairly straightforward to paint that and mask it. But there are lots of other designs where it wouldn't be straightforward to do that and it would be an absolute nightmare. Just because Edward want to do it in-house for their own cost and convenience and, and to hell with everybody else. Very foolish way of treating your customers. Very, very poor communication. Well, none. What were they thinking of? So, <clears throat> I think that that this has hurt Edward a lot and I think it's going to continue hurting them if they want everybody just to learn how to do it their way well they're going to be disappointed because I think a lot of modelers I know perhaps half uh, of the people who buy Edward kits that I can think of who've made comments saying well I'm just not going to buy them anymore now it isn't the end of the world because I say you can get around it with masks but you shouldn't have to pay more that defeats the whole object doesn't it and that makes Edward no longer very competitive if you've got to go and buy and paint masks to to complete your model and go through all that aggravation. They're making it hard, they're making it difficult to buy their product, that's never good. And that will be hurting them in the market. Now, many of us, me included, often go out and buy aftermarket, so, okay, yes, that solves it at a stroke, but you still come back to this point about cost. If you're buying aftermarket decals, if you're buying aftermarket masks, then Edward are really giving you something in the kit that's got no value. And then it's an additional cost making the, the overall value proposition a lot more expensive, isn't it? So I'm afraid that this has been a huge, huge mistake by Edward. It's probably the biggest mistake in the history of the company, uh, you know, while they've been in the market for model kits. And I would urge them, you know, they were they were doing so well until 2021 22 when they made this change they were i mean they were at telford in i can't think was it 19 just before the covid thing hit and i was there and they had this big thing they were selling kits like hot cakes they really were they were selling all their mask sets they were selling all the uh the zoom sets the pe set and there was people were queuing up me included to buy them i had to queue <laughs> Uh, and they were flying out of there, and they, were, they had the till going, it was like ting, 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 and I thought, well, they're doing really well, good, good on them, you know. And then they did this, and, and, and just destroyed all that. They didn't even come to uh, to Telford last time in 2022, and, uh, you know, the rumour that went round was they were blaming Brexit, and that's just, I don't think, I think that's just an excuse. I think that um, they know that if they go to an exhibition at the moment, this is the one subject everybody wants to talk about. It's not Brexit, it's about their decals and the fact that people can't use them. You know, they, they can be used, they can be used. If you want to pander to the manufacturer and dance to their tune and, you know, and I think you're going to end up with a very compromised model potentially anyway and maybe damage the model. And nobody wants that. Nobody wants that. Why have they done it? So, my advice is stop doing that immediately Go back to conventional decals. Even if you've got to buy them in from Cartograph, you did it before, it's fine. You can get your reputation back very quickly, but if you persist with this, I think it's going to really hurt Edouard. I really do. <coughs> um, I, I know lots of other models that so I don't buy Edouard anymore. I, can't, can't, I don't want to have to, you know, have any more nasty surprises. And the, the kits are not that good that they uh, are superior. You know, people talk about all oh, the detail. Yeah, but it's like others. There, as I said, there's a trend today by using CAD that people can create great surface detail. Doesn't mean that the kits go together well. Certainly the two examples I just showed were not good kits. Not good kits. Didn't go together very well. And when you look at what else is in the market, think about what's out there right now. You've got Armour Hobby. Well, they're knocking Edward out of the park in terms of surface quality is as good if not better. They've got decals that work, you know, and they've got very credible instructions. It's all right. It's all right. Uh, you've got Mini Art now coming in from Ukraine. Uh, they've, they've produced a new kit. Is it the P47D? Is it the Thunderbolt that's coming out? Very, very soon. I'll be reviewing that very shortly. That looks amazing. You've got ICM in the Ukraine as well. 
and of course I've been doing a lot of reviews for them and the, their product quality is fantastic and they've got proper decals which seem to work fine you know I presume that they are made fairly locally um, none of that print quality rubbish and they certainly haven't got any of this silly over the top literally <laughs> um, carrier film that you've got to peel off and in it no and I see them are very competitive indeed lots of interesting new subjects coming out all the time so Edward, I think it's Edward that is probably the one that's losing out the most here because I think these new manufacturers are losing chunks to these new guys that are coming along and doing a better job in many respects. So there we are. Sounds like a real Edward bashing session, which is not the way this should ever have been because they've always been so credible. So I'm going to just have a quick look now at a couple of kits I've got in front of me, just very briefly, because we have actually got some very positive things to say about Edward. But they just got to listen to the customer and change the ways. Don't blame the customer because it, you know, because the customer's doing it wrong. No, you should never have changed to something that was not customer friendly. That's the bottom line in it, I think. So I'm going to show you a recent and a less recent kit very, very quickly, um, and why I do actually like Edward kits, but for the reasons just stated, I'm a bit put off them, frankly. A bit put off them. So here we've got, you know, you've got this typical thing, they supply lots of things in the box, you get a mask set, zoom in so you can see this, a mask set, which we like, photo etch, which we very much like indeed, one of these beautiful painted instrument sets, um, so it's basically like a, a zoom, 2021, yes, so this is when the new decals came in, so it's Tora Tora Tora, whoops, now these these are the things that Edouard do brilliantly, and the you know the the um, their other ancillary aftermarket items they do wonderfully. So we've we've seen those recently with the um, the weapon set for the tornado, wasn't it? The big sin, which is a basically a, a resin uh, and a photo etch sort of combo sets, you know. Um, and they do those things so wonderfully well. They're aftermarket engines and resin ones. Fantastic products. So please don't think I'm anti Edward because that isn't true. Um, when I did the, um, the Fock of Wolf 190, the Revell 30 second scale, uh, I think I showed that, this is about two or three years ago now, and I showed that with all these incredible uh, aftermarket parts, the engines and the cockpit detail, all from Edward. Oh, they were absolutely knockout, fantastic resin, finely detailed instrumentation, way better than the injection molded plastic from Ravel. Um, so I do. There's Edward have got so much going for them, but they have just made the mother of all errors with their decals. Anyway, let's have a quick look at some of the plastic just to to show that I do actually like their products. And I'm going to show you this. Uh, Zero, Tora 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 Zero, and I have to say that I will make one observation, which is something I did allude to just a little bit earlier. Um, I do question sometimes one or two of the uh, ideas they have about things like the sprue gate uh, contact points. I'm going to show you here. Now, here we have, you know, somebody like me or Phil Flory or I don't know who it is does a, an inbox review. And you look at this and you think, wow, that is, your eyes pop out because it really does pop, doesn't it? But they also do have this habit of doing one or two odd things, which I mentioned earlier. Have a look at this. Again, look at these uh, screw, uh, sprue gate contact points. They're not the nicest, are they? They're going to always require a bit of extra clean up because you've got, it on the, you've got it on the front surface there. You've got to snip it and then you've got this... They're trying to do it for strength, of course. And then you've got this surface that then runs down on top of the inside. Can you see that? See it here as well. Now that's not ideal. And they've been doing quite a lot of that, Edward have. It's on the other side as well. Same issue. Requires quite a lot of clean-up. Not, not the same as what other manufacturers are doing. I'm not very keen on this. This is one of the things I'm not so, not so happy about in terms of the plastic. And there was a lot of this on the Tempest, and it was done very clumsily on that bottle. Very clumsily indeed. So, hmm. 
some odd choices being made in the way they're going about the engineering. Let's have a look at the, um, I mean, the, the actual surface detail is absolutely beautiful, of course. No argument about that. Well, let's just have a look at on this one. Look at the, the uh, fuselage. See if we can see any more examples of that. I mean, you've got some really, really beautiful ideas here. Like they've got this sort of uh, plug here for the uh, the internals for the engine, which works very well. Everyone that's, that's built this has said, yeah, they're fairly happy with it. Um, but again, can you see where that sprue gate contact point is? They have to have it running up the inside. So you've basically got two separate surfaces. You've got to snip it on. You've got to cut it off and smooth it off. And you have to do a little bit of extra work, which is, strictly speaking, is not really necessary. You're not seeing that on the Tamiyar kits, are you? Or Zokimura. Or Great Wall Hobby, for that matter. So, hmm. Yeah, mixed feelings about this. Um, but as I say, I, I've always got the feeling that it's going to be interesting. I'm going to build this one. Uh, that's a pledge of promise. And in the not too distant future, this is going to get built probably in the next 12 months. Um, because I wanted to do this sort of uh, Pearl Harbor thing, you know. For like the final countdown, I'm going to have that and the Tomcat from Tamiyar. They go together really well, wouldn't they? So this is going to get built. So I'm going to. I have an opportunity to reevaluate my opinion of Edward. Um, I think this is much better than that Tempest. I think this will be a better experience. We shall see. We shall see. Then we've got uh, the other thing that I'm not so keen on, which you often see, but I think you might see in the other one, is that when they have the clear parts, they have this thing where it's on like a round, like a carousel design. Well, they seem to have dropped that now and they've gone to a more conventional sprue. Uh, in this case, it's. Yeah, sprue A. So I'll just show you this. So this is like uh, like most model manufacturers are doing. Uh, very conventional, quite sensible. They're also using these Zokimura style uh, lugs to help push it out of the mould. You have to be a little bit careful though, obviously, when you're going to cut those off. A bit tricky. Be careful. Obviously, with you know transparent plastic is very brittle, as we know. But that's a sign where they've sort of dropped one of their more wacky ideas which didn't really bring any benefit. And they have taken on board the sort of um, industry norm, shall we say, which is fair enough. Um, that comes in a little bag there, protecting it. So that's, yeah, that's quite good. And um, there's another couple of sprays. I won't go through them all because I've already done a review on this. But in other respects, uh, quite, oops, quite a lot of, noisy, quite a lot of their products. Uh, pretty good, you know. Well, I, I do, I do laugh when people say, "Yeah, they're better than Tamiya." Well, they're not. Well, they're not. People complain about Tamiya's thick, thick decals. Oh, it's the least of your worries with this. <laughs> anyway, I won't go ranting about decals anymore. But you know, you can see here, there's a there's a quality there, isn't there? Um, get it focused, though. There's a quality there. You know, they, they've got the sprue attachment point on these parts are exactly right and where you want them to be. Not in the middle of the propeller blade, but just off up the, up the centre where it's no longer critical. So that's very sensible. Now why can't they apply that same thinking to the rest of the kit and not have those strange attachment points in silly places where it's going to cause problems? Anyway, that's the Zero. Um, more on this. There'll be an after build video when I do eventually build it. <laughs> so that should be quite interesting, I think. Um, but the rest of it, apart from the, that big frame with the fuselage and the wings on, the rest of it's done in a very conventional way, very sensible way. It's fine. Absolutely great, isn't it? But it, it just baffled me why, you know, who makes these decisions in these companies? Uh, it's almost like, did you let the accountant make this decision? Because <laughs> sometimes it looks like they did to try and save a penny here or a a euro cent there, you know, or a dime. <laughs> now then, I'm going to put those uh, fairly dreadful decals. I, I won't be using these decals. I tell you now, they they are just awful. One thing I forgot to mention, if you look closely at them, that everybody else that's used them has complained about as well. Look at the carrier film, which is on the top. Remember, not underneath. But look how big it is. So if you get that in the light, it's got a very 
oversized carrier film. Very old school, isn't it? And this is to enable you, presumably, to enable you to get a grip of it. Hmm. It's not a great, not a great scheme, is it? Not a great design. You know, uh, to, 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 to go to the market with that without telling anybody was just the silliest thing in modelling history, I think. It really, you know, it, it's bonkers. It really is. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> so that's the Zero, which will get built. So I say, I will try and reappraise my views of Edward. Let's have a look at this one, which is a bit of an older kit. Um, I just need to uh, prize this off. Bear with me a second. The Focke-Wulf 190A4. Now they do a whole range of these uh, 190s of course, Edouard. Uh, A5s and A8s and all sorts. But I'm just going to have a little peep at it because I haven't seen it for a long time myself. <coughs> and uh, just remind myself. So first of all I'll just point out this has got completely normal decals. So. You're not going to have any issues with this, you can tell straight away. Beautifully printed, I think it's in the wrapper, but I need to get it out really. Perfectly printed, good old school, because this kit's about eight years old, I think, at least. Um, good old fashioned printing, no issues whatsoever. Made in the Czech Republic, it says, 2017, before they start over these crazy ideas and messing about with things. Also includes swastikas for those that want to use them. So that's a good thing. <clears throat> then we've got uh, quite a quite a few parts, and I, I seem to recall when I saw this for the first time, being mighty impressed by all the options that you got. For example, I mean, there's quite obviously several on the sprue where you've got multiple options, but check this out. So you've got the fan at the front of the engine, which is the curling fan, directly behind the propeller. Sorry, just move that. And you, there's actually three to choose from here, three different designs. Now there's nothing wrong with the way they've attached the sprue points here. All very sensible. Same again with the propeller. That's a very beautiful looking prop. In fact, there's two options on the prop there. Um, everything looks perfectly normal, perfectly sensible. Three different options on the gear bay, uh, bay well. Um, you've got your front of your engine down here. Looks lovely, doesn't it? It's a nice plastic. You've got your cockpit there. And you've got another cockpit option here. So obviously there's, there's obviously several uh, options within the kit. Then on the next one you've got all the small parts and, the, and this, you know, you look at this particular kit and it's been done beautifully, it really has. Look at the fineness of the moulding here. There's nothing wrong with a, an Edward 190, is there? You've got different wheel options, different tyre tread options, treaded at this end, and smooth at this end. And then you've got, obviously, there's a night fighter, some of the parts of the night fighter included there, the radio antennas. <clears throat> there's all sorts, isn't there? You've got your exhausts down here. That, this kit looks absolutely stunning, I've got to be honest. And it's not a new one, obviously it's nine years old now. And we've got three different options here for the, for the cowling on the top of the nose. And then you've got your fuel tank, centre line tank, and then you've got all your rudders and your uh, vertical Stabilizers or elevators, actually. <coughs> Vertical stabilizers there. Really nice, you know, there's nothing weird here at all. Nothing jumps out and makes me think, ouch, that's not going to be fun. It all looks very conventional stuff. Very high quality bit of plastic. And you look at it and you think, I'd like to build this. Yeah, you almost want to get the glue out of the knife immediately, really. Which is not necessarily the case with some of the newer ones. And I've actually seen build videos on that Tempest where people have had to make all sorts of mods to make it go together. 
really crazy to be honest. That didn't go down too well. Then we have got, let's just have a look at this, these critical parts of the, uh, the fuselage and the wings. Now, this is going to illustrate the point I was making perfectly. Why have Edward gone to what they've gone to now? Because this is an earlier generation of kits from them and I think it's better. Look at the sp sprue gate attachment points here. Yeah, They are not bending around the corner onto the inner surface of the wing, onto the interior, at all. They're just on the end, like we are more used to. They're just on the end, that's it. And you turn it over. No, they don't they don't take up another surface enough to be trimmed off two different surfaces at all. Completely conventional stuff, same on the other side. See? Just on the on the end, in the normal way that you know with Airfix or Tamiya or whatever. <coughs> so don't let anybody tell you and uh, you see a lot of this like this I've complained about it before, this sort of rumour mill sheep thing where a manufacturer justifies it and then people just retweet it and think that they're giving breaking news you know and they don't think to question it and think hang on a minute that's a lot of rubbish because that's not the way you were doing it until two three years ago and it was absolutely fine giving no problems at all look at this here's the fuselage and again it's fine beautiful quality superb details of rivets panel lines everything you want is there. No weird sprue attachment points. Completely conventional. Look at the actual point and the way it ends. It's on top. It's not round the corner onto the inside of the, the mating surface at all. So why have they changed it then? Yeah? It just doesn't make any sense. It just doesn't make any sense. And it's one of the things that puts me right off Edouard because you've got to do all this double-sided clean-up and you've got to get it you've got to get it right because they're going to put this plastic that you don't want exactly where you don't want it and you are going to have to get that right and if you don't get it perfect you'll have your, your wing top and bottom joint for example not going to make together properly I don't understand it I don't understand it um, as I said for me when, when you see this, this is what Edward have built their reputation on kits like this one here. And you can, I can, you know, I got that and I thought, hmm, now I understand. I think I had a conversation with somebody about four years ago and they said, you want to get 190. You know, if you don't think Edward are that great, that'll change your mind. And it did. Right up to the point that they went and screwed everything up about two years ago, starting doing all this weird stuff with the, the moulding and with the, the decals. I never liked this carousel thing, but again, this kit doesn't have it. So you've got your clear parts here, again in a little bag, separate bag, which is good. And uh, some beautiful looking, got four different options on the canopy here. Look. Looks absolutely superb. On the other side, there. So, I think that basically, in summary, Edouard were becoming one of the greatest model manufacturers of the lot. They were in the top three, I think. I think they were right up there with Tamiya. Um, and, okay, not, we'll not include wing nut wings in this. But with Tamiya and with Zoki Mora, they are right, right up there. And now they've taken a big step backwards. And I don't understand it. I don't understand it. Uh, it'd be interesting to see, because I'm sure a lot of you will comment. <laughs> Especially the Edward fanboys will be on. <laughs> not my language, remember? It's not mine. I don't use that word. That's what some of the Airfix fanboys talk about. They say, tell me our fanboys. Anybody's a fanboy who doesn't agree with them, you know. Or a hater. <laughs> but something's gone wrong in their process of design I think um, you can clearly see there there's two generations uh, they are seven years apart those two kits and the older one to me looks superior it's superior in terms of the uh, the quality of the concept overall the decals are superior and the actual uh, the way the plastic's been 
uh, moulded um, and the actual ease of construction is superior. Um, now they've, they seem to be doing things that are convenient for them as a manufacturer and not thinking about the customer. So that's that's my sort of take on Edouard. It's not very comprehensive, I admit. I have had some bad experiences personally with building them. I'm hoping that if I can get past ignoring the fact I'm going to have to get some aftermarket decals and I'm going to have some work to do on those uh, sprue gate contact points when I cut them off. But I'm hoping that apart from that, this will be a good experience because people do speak fairly, fairly well about that zero. I think I should also build up this uh, 190 because I've already got a 190 but it's a Tamiya one. And I think that's going to be better than the Tamiya one, uh, which is quite old, from the 90s I think. So I think I should probably build both of those kits. Uh, they're the only two Edwards I've got in stock, I think, at the moment. Um, because, as I say, my perception of them uh, since the Tempest has <coughs> gone downhill a bit, I'm afraid. And you can see good reason for my opinions there, I think. So I'd like to hear what other people think, whether it, whether they're being put off to uh, Edward by these problems. Um, and I think they're very easy fixes, you know. I mean, I'm not saying they're cheap fixes, <laughs> but they're very technically easy to fix. You know, your decals just either do them properly or subcontract them out again. That fixes that problem with a stroke. And re have another think about you know the way you're designing these these uh, frames for the sprues and the way that you've got the parts meeting the actual gate the tree because I don't think it's the best design at all I think it's uh, you look at them you think, hmm. every, every time you cut a part off it's going to be a major cleanup on every part that they do like that it's frustrating and you know Tammy are not doing that are they um, tell me I did do that though, I'm just thinking on one kit, I'm trying to think that I've seen. Now which one was it? It wasn't that recent, it was about two, maybe two years ago. Uh, and I commented on it, I think Phil Fuller may have commented on it in one of his reviews as well. I can't think what the kit was. What was it? Was it the Spitfire? It might have been the Spitfire Mark 1. I'll need to go back and watch my own review just to check that. Um, but there was one where I complained... <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> There's one I complained about. And I said, hmm, this is done to this before. So there must be um, a technical reason. Maybe it's cheaper or <coughs> maybe maybe it means they can use less force or pressure or less plastic to get them out of the mould. It might make the actual the process quicker or cheaper, I don't know, but it isn't good for the modeler. That design is something I'd like to see dropped, and I, I just wonder what your opinions are, really. Anyway, <coughs> so I need a drink. <coughs> Let me know what you think. Um, I don't, I don't wish, I didn't wish the, this to be harsh on Edward in the way it was on Ravel, because Ravel a mess, frankly. Edward had everything going for them. They had the world at their feet. They've become one of the premium top three manufacturers, I think. Certainly, I think they're the best manufacturer in Europe. But I don't think they are now. I think Airfix are close enough, close enough in some ways, um, but are not making such huge faux pas mistakes that, they, that Edward have made here. Um, complete clangers, you know. They've, they've dropped the ball completely and gone from... Hero to zero in my eyes, they really have. And I wish them no ill at all. I'd like, I'd just like to see them listen to this video, talk to other customers and then just drop these silly things and then bingo, they're off on a roll again. <clears throat> but they don't seem to be releasing so much. I, I'm not sure that their finances have been helped by this because I think that customers are, are put off by it. You know? And it wouldn't surprise me, it wouldn't surprise me at all if you know, some people are just not wanting to buy the product because <clears throat> they don't want to have to go out and buy new decals and then have to fight the build and blah blah blah. Now, I will get round it. I'll just buy some aftermarket and Pearl Harbor decals and that. Yeah, but it's another cost, isn't it? And it, it mm, wasn't a particularly cheap kit to start with. <clears throat> I don't think we want to have to do that. It's exactly what many of us have been talking about in these kind of videos where 
we want the manufacturer to include all the decals that can be easily applied and a stencil set, <coughs> mass set I should say, for the canopies on these aircraft. Uh, and we don't want to have to go hunting around the market and have to buy umpteen other items. You know, I'm saying this to you as well, Airfix. We don't want to have to go looking for decals and, and uh, st sorry, mask sets. Please just provide them in the one box. We don't want it to be like a, just a start point, you know. <clears throat> and for youngsters, even those that are hand painting the kits, they still need a mask set for the canopy, don't they? You know? There's not many youngsters can hand paint a canopy really well, and they're just not going to do that. So I don't, I don't have any tolerance for the resistance that comes um, from the likes of Airfix, and <clears throat> we get it a little bit from ICM as well, actually. Everyone needs to understand that now aircraft should have a mass set for the canopies included in the kit. Yeah, and if you have to subcontract it or whatever you do, that's fine, but it needs to be there. Um, otherwise, you know, <clears throat> the one thing that Edouard did have going for them, you know, you'd say, well, that was £30 and that's it. You don't need anything else. It's all in there. Now, they've blown that, that whole concept that they were market leader on. It's blown to bits because now you've got to go hunting after to decals or masks or whatever you, to try and get some, some decent decals because theirs are not, you know, they're usable, you know, on the, as I say, the win the right direction. Your lottery numbers come up and all that, but there's so many opportunities with those decals for for the process to ruin the model. Too many, too many chances of it going wrong. Uh, you know, depending on what the temperatures are, and to, depending on what the sort of barometric pressures are, and what solutions you've used, and all this kind of thing. It's a it's a minefield. It's just it's just there to go wrong, and undermine what the model has done, and all the good work the modeler could have done. You know, some genius like Phil Flory or Spencer Pollard could come along and at the very end, and look, this happened with Phil, didn't it? <clears throat> at the very end, you end up with a bit of a train crash. And it's just because they can't put some proper decals in the kit. It's not good enough. Sorry. So, Edward can get back to them being in the top three if they just listen to the advice I've just given them. And it's not just me. It's the feedback I'm hearing from all over. I just don't understand it, you know. And, uh, and if they do show up at Telford this year, I'll go and speak to them about it. I will, and I'll say, don't tell me this is, you're not doing it right. Just stop producing something that is so difficult to use, not not modeler friendly, not youngster friendly, not newcomer friendly, useless, almost useless. You shouldn't have to become a you know an expert genius, grade one decal applier just to be able to finish your model. No, that's not what we want at all. So. Let's see what they can do about it in the future. I do hope, genuinely. It's frustrating because Edouard have got such a lot going for them, you know. <clears throat> and they're so, they were doing so well. They were doing so well. They were so strong when we got to 2020. Um, and then maybe because of the pandemic or something, they decided they wanted to, to keep the business <coughs> all in-house and do them, all their own manufacturing. But that, again, that's fine. But don't reinvent the wheel. Reinvent the wheel and then don't tell anybody you've reinvented it. That was a stupid mistake. Very, very foolish and unwise. Anyway, enough of me. I didn't want to go on too long. So, so I have got limited experience of Edouard. And some of you might say, well, you've got limited experience. I've had enough experience, though. I've had two bad experiences. These will be the third and fourth Edouard kits. I'm hoping... I know this one's going to be okay. <laughs> that one I'm not so sure about. We shall see. We shall see. I mean, I've got the skills. I could probably do it. Uh, even with their decals, but I'm not going to. Think how much time you're going to spend. Uh, again, Phil Flory spoke about this, and he was saying it was very hard graft and time-consuming, and he didn't get... and it went wrong horribly, you know, and it's been like that for most quite a lot of the models that have tried to use them. <coughs> Maybe with that particular model, there's not many decals. I might get away with it, but... Again, I, I'm not inclined to waste my time pandering to a manufacturer who can't be bothered to give the customers what they want. Um, you know, if you... I once worked for a business like this, and they said, your customers don't know how to use it properly on a product that was clearly not a good one. And it's a rare 
it was a very rare experience for me to be in this situation. And the technical people and the production people said, it's your customers, they don't know what they're doing, they, they can't do it properly, they haven't got the skills. And I said, well, you know what I think, the customer is usually always right, and I think we should give the customer what they actually want. And not make life as hard as possible, where they've got to, you know, be geniuses at applying one particular product in one particular way, just because we want to make it in a way that suits us. And I think that's exactly what's happening here at Edward. Said my piece. Be interested to hear what other people think. <coughs> um, I think it's a huge deterrent to sales, and I, I don't understand. If I was the managing director of Edward, seeing the way that I know their sales have dropped because of this, I would pull the plug on this yesterday. I'd have pulled the plug on it at six, well, end of last year. After 12 months, and the, the feedback they got was horrendous. You know, people were furious with them. They don't really seem to listen, it seems to me. And they're better, because otherwise, I think they're going to get themselves in a lot of trouble. You know, they're, they're, the chances of them growing their business, well, they've wiped that out, really. They've probably almost certainly gone backwards. I don't know how much buy, I'd love to know. But I, I just hope that they see wisdom, and maybe if my video... It's only a little old me, of course, but... I think a lot of you will have had an opinion or some experience as well, maybe. Please share it, because we'd like to hear it. And, um, yeah, I just think it's frustrating that businesses can be so tone-deaf to their customers, really. Anyway, that's my two penneth, or five cents, as they say in America. Um, I'd like it to have been a bit more of a positive story about Edouard, because it was. If, if, this, if I'd have done this Let's Talk About Edouard in 2018... This would have been like a loving, it would be like, I'd be like a fanboy, you know. And they just seem to have screwed it up so badly. I just don't understand why anybody would do that. You know, you need to go to the market and be sure, if you're going to make big changes in your product, you need to make sure the customers understand how, what you're doing, why you're doing it, and how they, how they are to use it. And going in blind and changing everything to, you know, and customers finding that they ruined expensive models, that was just the dumbest thing I've ever seen. It was a real... It reminds me of Gerald Ratner, the British jeweller, who was interviewed famously in the late 80s. And uh, he was actually interviewed by a journalist. And he was at a dinner, I think he was at a dinner. Uh, was it in a speech? Dinner speech? I can't remember. But he basically said that, yeah, all our products are just complete crap anyway. And he actually said that. And that was it. And, and the shares plummeted and people just stopped buying the product because he just blurted out what was obviously the truth. And this is uh, perhaps not quite as bad as Ratner, but it's a little bit of a Ratner moment, isn't it? It's like... Uh, Edward is a better product than Ratner's was. But let's not shoot ourselves in the foot like they've done here. It's so unnecessary, you know. Do not reinvent the wheel and don't fix what is not broken. And that's what they've done. That's, that's probably the best way of summing it up. They've fixed something that wasn't broken. It was a Swiss watch is what they had and they've gone and broken it. They better get it fixed because otherwise it's going to hurt them. Anyway, sorry if it was a bit negative. I, I kind of didn't expect that. But as soon as I started to get them out and I remembered what the issues are, I thought, oh... There we go, that's Edward. <clears throat> let's hope that in the future, uh, I'd like to revisit some of these Let's Talk About the Manufacturer. And perhaps in two or three years, I'd like to revisit them and then see if there's been any changes. Or maybe just revisit the ones where there have been changes. And I hope that this is one of the companies that gets it right again. Because Edward's interesting choices of model, they have got some beautiful designers, um, or design quality, I should say. <clears throat> The conceptualisation and the thoughts in the aftermarket bits they include are really brilliant. So don't screw it up with something simple and dumb like they've done. You know, it's really shot everybody else in their business in the foot, really. Uh, and I think most of us would agree we'd like to see them return to success and return to being a market leader. And they're not right now. They're not. Let's hope that they can reverse that. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. Hope you'll give us a... I'm marks out of 10 for this manufacturer it would have been 9 out of 10 it's probably about 7 now that's probably fair I think uh, let's hope they can get to 9, 9.5 in the future I hope you'll give me 10 out of 10 with a like with a thumbs up and um, I'll be back soon and 
I'm going to be talking soon about Tamiar, which will be it won't be all cake, it won't be all cake and biscuits and tea and biscuits. Uh, beer and skittles, I think is the expression I was looking for, isn't it? It won't all be beer and skittles, but I think it'd be more positive than this one. Um, and then we've got we're going to talk a little bit about Great Wall Hobby. I'm going to talk about Zuki Mora. Uh, just trying to think of the other ones that I said I would do. Bum, 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 bum. Not going to do Border. I'm not going to do Hong Kong model and I'm not going to do Kinetic um, because I think you all know what I think of those companies. Great plastic. Instructions not so fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm, not, I'm just not going to dwell on that. Um, I don't want to make them all like a rant and a raving session. I think that if I don't include the manufacturers they can read into that that I'm not overly impressed and there's got a lot of room for improvement you know. Edward, here have got so many things going for them that they've got right, <coughs> including the instructions, and, and they've gone and just screwed up one, one or two things that they didn't need to. That was just silly, so we hope that they'll return to, to greatness. Anyway, until next time, thank you very much for watching. Pleasure to see you all, and thank you for your time. And until next time, look after yourselves. Thanks a lot, and bye for now.